What up, what up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today on Fitness Tech Reviews, we're going over the Garmin Venue 2 Plus. This came out this year, January 2022, and it's a little bit bigger than the Venue 2. I'm gonna go over what its specs are, what its fitness and sleep tracking is all about, and really, is it right for you? But let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, let's go ahead and get right to those specifications. First thing, it is coming in at about $450, unless you're getting it on sale. It comes in three different colors. It comes in a silver stainless steel, it also comes in a slate stainless steel, and it also comes in a cream gold type stainless steel as well. It does have a touchscreen AMOLED display with Gorilla Glass 3 on it, and that's coming in at about 1.3 inches. It does have a silicone band with a 20 millimeter quick release band that's built in, and the band's pretty good, but you can always replace it really easily. It does have five atmospheres of water resistance. As far as its battery life is concerned, you can get up to nine days with it as a smartwatch. If you want to do always on, it'll probably be anywhere from four to five, maybe closer to three days. If you want to add pulse socks, which is going to help with your sleep tracking as well, which I turned on, you're probably going to get around five to six days. And if you want to use it with GPS, you can get up to 24 hours with it on GPS. But if it does have music on, it's going to be around eight hours. As far as sensors are concerned, it does have a heart rate monitor, a GPS with GLONASS Galileo, very accurate with its GPS. It has a compass, a gyroscope, an accelerometer, a thermometer, an ambient light sensor, and a pulse ox detector as well. And it also has an altimeter as well, so you'll be able to check your elevation and stairs climbing as well. It is connected via Bluetooth 5.0 to your smartwatch device, either iOS or Android. It has two separate apps, either Garmin IQ, which is going to customize your watch faces, and it also has the Garmin Connect app that we're going to go into a second when we get into the fitness and sleep tracking. It has a bunch of different running profiles. It does a little bunch of golf stuff as well with outdoor activities, cycling features as well, and it has kid activity tracking features if that's something you're interested in. As far as it, what it does when it does activity track, it tracks calories burned, floors climbed, distance traveled, intensity minutes, and it also of course tracks your steps as well, and it also has body battery as well. That is something that Garmin does that kind of lets you know how much energy that you have left in your body battery and does deplete throughout the day but if you take a nap it does increase and stuff like that all right, now let's go into its fitness and sleep tracking. You do need to go into the Garmin Connect app for all of that. I don't want to pay with my watch, even though you can do that, you can use Garmin Pay through this watch. I don't want to set up any reminders, no thank you, but right here at the top tells me where my body battery is, how much I charged throughout the last night, how much I've drained, where my stress levels are, which is always great, my intensity minutes for today and for the week so far, how many steps I did, the floors I've climbed, this is all great built right in. But when you go in to go into your activities you can jump right into there so let's go into all activities so it kind of gives us an idea what's going on so I did a cardio workout a little while back and it did fairly well so the spikes did really well it was a hard workout for me but there were a couple of little things here and there that it dropped on so if you do switch it over to the side it will go with you and you can actually zoom into this if you like so you do see a little things where it does drop here and there that's when my wrist was in a little bit of a flexion and more of a plank position where it dropped so it was a little disappointed when something like that happens it took a little while for it to come back but when it did it was very accurate I'll also be posting my whoop data right over here as well so it was a little bit disappointed by all of that but as far as its run tracking is concerned very accurate with run tracking it did great with the run tracking very great with the heart rate tracking and not only that the GPS tracking was on point and of course it has 24 hours of GPS tracking if you're looking to go on triathlons and stuff like that and it has move IQ built in so it'll be able to kind of let your watch know when you are switching activities from like running to swimming to cycling and stuff like that so let's go into our sleep tracking that is under health stats and of course under sleep today it tracked me at about five hours and 56 minutes which was a little more than than I actually did. So I did wake up at four o'clock, but it had me going to sleep a little bit early. Here and there, the Garmin does track me a little bit earlier before I fall asleep. I do look at my phone uh, while I'm laying in bed for a pretty solid period of time, but my whoop catches me when I actually do end up falling asleep, where this more along the line catches you where you are just kind of just stop moving type thing. So that's a little disappointed, but it did catch that big awake time that I was awake for a little bit. So that 
that was awesome. Even the REM sleep is pretty accurate, deep, not so much, but throughout the entire week that I used it, it was fairly accurate. I mean, nine hour one, but it does catch me when I'm waking up and feeding my daughter. So overall, a fairly good sleep tracker with a lot of great information. And not only that, respiratory rate is built in pulse ox here at the bottom and kind of tells you how much you're moving here at the bottom as well. So it's a lot of great data if you need data for sleep. All right, going through the user interface here, we do have three physical buttons on this side, kind of a home, a kind of a back button, a middle shortcut button, and the top button, which goes to things like widgets. So when you do hit that top button, is gonna give you your favorite activities, and then when you hit this bottom button, you can actually change these, but you have other things you can work through as well. And then the back button will bring you back each time. When you swipe down, this is gonna give you a daily idea of how everything was, like if you wanna to go to your notifications, if you want to go ahead and reply to a text message anything like that hitting back and it's all built in and all very customizable as well built right into the system and then when you swipe down comes all the way home this middle button right here when you hit it it does a shortcut you can set it up any way you like with alarms with locations brightness anything you would like to but it's already set up if you want to hold it to go right to a voice assistant you can set up your voice assistant google assistant alexa anything like that when you hold that top right button this is going to give you this whole entire little wheel that you can all also customize well your wallet is up here if you need it and off button call button if you want to turn do not disturb mode on again you can customize that and then back at home when you hold the bottom right button this goes into if you have more watch faces built into your actual phone built into your actual watch you can switch it out whichever one you would like and it goes right to it and then you have other things built in there as well different phone calls and history and then you have your settings right here you this is where you change out anything uh, if you need to change your which wrist you're on the sensors and what they're doing the connectivity your profile battery management and stuff like that if you want to turn on always on display you could turn it on always on things like workouts and stuff like that so if you want to time your shortcut out to always on you can always do that during your activities which I forgot to do with this watch here and when you turn it around of course it does have all of its sensors and not only that this is where you put the barrel charger in that kind of clicks in and charges relatively quickly and then you also have your quick releases back here so if you do want to switch them out they're easy to switch in and out relatively quickly on the fly So what are my overall thoughts and recommendations with the Venue 2 Plus? This is a great band. I actually thought about replacing my Galaxy Watch 4 as my daily driver. I don't really feel like I need to switch over anytime soon because this gives me great battery life. Through its charging cable, it charges fairly quickly. So if you want to take a shower, I do not use it while I'm taking a shower. So you can charge it through that little bit of shower period. And if you do that, you probably won't even have to charge it for like two, three weeks at a time, even with that just little bit of a boost just from a little shower in between. So that's one of the biggest things that I was a big fan of, but I probably won't be switching over because I am a Samsung fan. There are things that are built into Samsung. It's a little bit better of a smartwatch, but for the price of about $450, it is a little bit more expensive than a lot of the watches out there, but it has so many great features. It's got a great build. It has awesome battery life, great smartwatch features, and overall, you will be very happy with its screen and all that and its buttons. So it is a great watch if you are looking to purchase for around $450. I would take it over a Samsung watch if I didn't have a Samsung phone. And I would definitely take it over an Apple watch as it had just has better battery life. So you'll be able to check your sleep stats as well. But if you aren't looking for things like the speaker or the microphone and you don't need to take calls and stuff like that and you don't need the bigger watch face, you can just go with the regular Venue 2, which will also give you a great battery life. They even do say it has better standby in the smartwatch area as far as battery life is concerned. So if you don't need the things like the Google Assistant, you don't need the things like the speaker or the microphone, then I would just go with the Venue. Well, hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. If it was, please smash that like button if it was really helpful make sure you subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell so you'll be one of the first ones to know when my newest video comes out and if you do check out the links down below it is going to shoot you over to amazon at a regular price but a little bit of that purchase is going to help me grow my channel 
But as always, guys, stay happy, stay healthy, and above all, stay positive. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.